Yeah, I mean, I have a granddaughter who's two, and and all she's interested at the moment is is how excited I get when she manages to find the potty. You know, that is really as far as it goes right now. And obviously, there are stacks of toys left over from my fifteen year old son, and obviously, lots of little toys that we bought for her, and she just plays with whatever's available. So it's ridiculous to say that a two-year-old has any idea of trans ideology, you know, and to say that nurseries need to be aware of this. I just think it's outrageous. Let's just let kids be kids, you know, and stop these ridiculous stereotypes. I spent my whole youth with short hair, smelling of chlorine, playing with the boys, falling off my bike, falling off tree swings, you know, and I don't think I wore a skirt until I was about 17. So that did not make me a boy. It really didn't. No, I, I couldn't agree more. And the fact that nurseries are being asked to get involved. No, leave this to the parents. But look, Sean, your interview at the weekend was so worrying because it really does feel like this trans lobby. And by the way, it's not most trans people. And I read the whole interview and you actually made it very clear that you are friends with trans people. You uh, have parents of, sorry, some of your, your friends who are parents have children who are trans. But this is about a very small section of the trans community, right? The extremists. And they want to cancel people like you. And unfortunately, we saw with Macy Gray a few weeks ago, it's starting to work, Sharon. Yeah, well, you say it's starting to work. I think it's been working for a while. I actually think it's working less now. You know, I think the sort of things we've just been talking about and the sunlight that we're shining on, sport in particular, obviously that's my area, that's what I've been talking about, but all these other things as well. You know, it's beginning to bring it to the general public. They're beginning to understand that they don't want drag time stories taught to their primary school children, you know, with people that are dressed up as if they're hookers. And it, it, this is just not appropriate. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's adult entertainment. It's not for children. And I think most people are just seeing it now. It's the sunlight, bringing the sunlight to it. So, yeah, I mean, it has been exaggerated. And I have to be really careful here and say there are a lot of people in this country that are in real dire straits at the moment. You know, the reason that I spent a lot of work money was that my mum left me about £80,000 when she died. She died four years ago after probate. I got it three years ago. And I've used all that money up to enable me to be able to fight this. This does not mean that I'm on the breadline. You know, I'm very yeah. lucky. I live in a lovely house, which is mostly paid for. And, you know, there is no chance in hell that I'm anywhere near bankruptcy. So there are people out there that are really struggling, and that's not me. But what I was saying was that because they went after agents, because they went after charities, because they tried their damnness to, to, to stop my work from coming in, it did mean that I had to use my savings or my gift yeah. from my mum to basically, you know, pay my bills. Which is incredibly concerning because, look, Sharon, you're brave and you're passionate. But what I worry about are the folk who have the same feelings as you internally. And I'm sure you, like me, we know lots of high profile people who will talk to us privately and say, look, you're fighting the good fight. Keep doing it. But I couldn't speak out. Uh, that's what they say to me. I couldn't speak out because I would lose my presenting gig. I, I would lose my contract with this brand. Yeah, and that's the sad thing, because if everybody spoke out that feels that way, this problem would get sorted out straight away. For example, this Friday, you know, the RFU are going to their members to see if they can um, revisit their trans policy. Now, we know if that you actually polled their, their, their athletes, their female rugby players who are in between 20 and 30 percent greater risk of getting injured, bearing in mind the papers are full of all the concussion stories at the moment, that they would be have a resounding, please no, put safety first. But they don't do that. They allow the trans lobby to emotionally blackmail them rather than putting safety and fairness first. So there is a way that we can have fairness and then work on how we come up with solutions for inclusion. Because there's nobody in sport that doesn't want everybody included, but you've got to get it in the right order, you know, and safety first, fairness, and then inclusion.